What's happening top five scary family and welcome back. Toys are fun. I mean, usually, usually. My sister had that spinning fairy thing that would fly off into space if you yanked it too hard and that was probably the best weapon ever. If anybody's breaking in, just <laughs> head gone, easy. Some toys rock while some are just out to kill you. Some entities use toys as a vessel to do their dirty work. So here to break down our top five horror movie monsters who are toys, I'm Taylor McWaters, and let's get counting. Kicking off the list at number five, we have the clown doll from Poltergeist. This one gave me nightmares growing up, like for sure. Poltergeist was released in 1982. The original, directed by Toby Hopper and written by Steven Spielberg, it tells the story of a family that was haunted by well, yeah, a poltergeist. These things come in many shapes and sizes, and of the hauntings that occurred, came in the form of a clown sometimes. Ooh ooh. So this movie already has some scary history behind it, plot aside. Like the fact that they use real bones instead of fake ones for filming, and then the fact that the cast and crew members had actually died in real life. So the son Robbie has a clown toy, which is just what we all grew up with. Now, horror movie or not, I would never have this near me or my children. That's just a fact, especially one that looks like this. Okay, Robbie has the right idea here. Try covering the clown with like a jacket or something. I mean, yeah, of course. That thing is huge though. You would need like five jackets just to cover that thing and be fully at ease. So this clown doll is meant as a distraction so that the dark spirits could actually abduct Carol Ann. But this scene is so frightening that whenever people remember this movie, like myself, we all think of this scene instead. This thing is nuts. I used to hate looking under my bed for this reason. And it didn't help that I watched this when I was super young. Thanks mom and dad, awesome. Since then the clown has been parodied numerous times, most famously from Scary Movie 2. I don't care how many times we laugh about it, this toy still gives me nightmares. I think because he's big, like some creepy dolls are just like a foot tall or whatever. This dude is like wrapping his arm around Robbie's neck. He's like a lanky guy. If I went toe to toe with him, like this guy's got some reach, I don't know. And before we head on over to number four on our list, don't forget to give this video a nice thumbs up because it really helps us out here at the studio. Thank you so much. Okay, back to some awful toys. Number four, Chucky. Making his debut back in Child's Play in 1988, Chucky is one of the most popular horror movie antagonists ever, with eight movies now about his horrible ways. We've all imagined being friends with our toys. Maybe if you grew up an only child, you would find yourself comforted by some of the stuffed animals. When Child's Play hit theaters, this comforting idea was shattered. Child's Play tells the dark tale of serial killer Charles Lee Ray, who was actually named after three different real life murders. Nice touch. He uses voodoo to transfer his soul into the popular child's doll, Chucky. So once he finds his new body, he realizes that he's immortal and he has the strength of a full grown adult. He also loves the new role. He likes killing a lot. It's really twisted. He's smart too, like he knows what he is and he uses it to his advantage. It's not like a haunted artifact where things close to it become haunted. No, no, this is the soul of a serial killer. He's the same guy, he just has a small body, very small. A character like this is such a good call for horror movies because everybody has the idea that their toys can talk at some point in their life. Like when Toy Story came out, I grilled my Beanie Babies, like hard too. I'm like, look, if you can talk, just tell me. I'm seven years old, you can trust me with anything. I'm not gonna tell anybody. I would have told everybody. But what up the slasher game was when the new Child's Play movie came out where Chucky uses technology to help him take out his victims. So this is a character that is so human-like, you can just throw him in any decade and he'll still kill it. Pun intended. I feel like I can take him. I don't know. I got these long legs. That guy can try and get close, but I mean, I'm just gonna hoof this dude back in time. Like I said, yo, it's Tim season now. We got some Timberland boots. Good luck, dude. Good luck. The credits of the original Child's Play were supposed to include this creepy theme song about Chucky with the lyrics, Chucky, Chucky, go away. You're too rowdy when you play. Awesome, with fun cheering in the background too, for good measure. They decided to take it out because it was too over the top. I mean, the last thing we need is to be humming that on the bus subconsciously. No way am I letting that get stuck in my head. Mm -mm, not today. Number three, Billy, Dead Silence. So before Aquaman and The Conjuring was released in theaters, director James Wan teamed up with horror writer Leigh Whannell to make Dead Silence. 
This film was released in 2007 and should have done a lot better with their ratings. Dead Silence packs all the punches you need for a solid horror movie. We got creepy dolls, we got angry ghosts, Donnie Wahlberg as a detective. Nice. Like you can't go wrong here, it's fine, it's good fun all around. But in Dead Silence, we follow the life of a widow named Jamie Ashen, who returns to his hometown, Raven's Fair, for the funeral of his late wife. His wife had received a creepy package containing a ventriloquist doll named Billy, nice, and was found murdered only minutes after, not nice. Okay, so at this point, I don't care who you are, if something like this happens in a town, guess what? Surprise, you're moving. Congrats on the decision. Wishing you great things in the future. Cheers. Get the f*** out of here. Now obviously Jamie is a prime suspect in the murder so he decides to unravel this mystery while he's in Raven's Fair. And this is when things start to get a little bit weird. So back in the 1940s, local ventriloquist Mary Shaw was the talk of Raven's Fair. That was until a young boy heckled her during her show and exposed her whole ventriloquist act. Nice, gotta love hecklers. Good one! Kidding, don't haunt me. Oh my god. The townsfolk didn't react too well to Mary being a fraud, so they hunted her down and cut out her tongue and left her for dead, instead of leaving a bad Yelp review. Okay. As if that wasn't alarming enough, the townsfolk buried her with her children. And by children, I mean her disgustingly creepy dolls. And as time passes, Mary begins to seek revenge on all those who did her dirty, using the evil doll as help. To construct the perfect doll. Number two, Billy Saw. Hey, here we are, back to another Billy, with another doll, with Leo L. This is great. Can I just say the name Billy is done now? Like, I can't hear that name and not immediately get creeped out, you know? My dad's name is Bill, and that's already way too close to this classic evil doll name. Saw it was released back in 2004, and what started off as a low-budget horror film is now one of the most popular franchises ever, with a new title, Spiral, on the way. So it's safe to say that something about watching people get tortured is working. But one of the main characters that stuck in our heads after we saw the first movie was Billy the Puppet. This Billy is scarier than the other Billys, I think. Maybe it's because our boy John Kramer used him as a vessel to relay these horrible messages. This was the initial thought when it came to the Saw franchise. Before all the sequels started pouring out, this doll was the scariest part, kind of. So when John Kramer and his wife Jill were expecting a baby, John went out and bought this small wooden puppet as a gift for the birth of their coming son, Gideon. Jill was hurt during a robbery and unfortunately the child didn't make it. So John became very close to the doll. He was emotionally attached. This was one of the few memorabilia left from their unborn child. Now after that he spent most of his time alone in the workshop, obviously extremely depressed, with the doll by his side, divorcing Jill along the way. So Jill and their lawyer, Art Blank, went to go visit John and see how he's doing in his workshop of sadness. And while there, Art accidentally knocks Billy off a table. We then see John pick up the doll and start to stroke its hair. It's super sad, but the design of the doll makes it super creepy. Billy was a super popular Halloween costume after these movies came out. I remember seeing tons of pranks where people would just roll up on a tricycle. You didn't have to say anything. People were already afraid. They knew what was up. In a movie about torture and revenge, they did a pretty smart move by using this doll as a mascot. And it kind of ties into the plot in a smooth way. And then we see an updated version of this doll in 2017's Jigsaw. And finally at number one, you guessed it, Annabelle. I saved our favorite for last because it's based off of a real life haunting. Annabelle scares the shit out of me. For real, Annabelle was released in 2014 and was directed by John Leonetti and since then there have been connections to the Conjuring movies as they share one terrifying universe. Crafted from the minds of James Wan, of course. Annabelle the doll is actually the second antagonist in the Conjuring, so she's a pretty big deal. So Annabelle is a powerful demonic entity that latches itself onto a porcelain doll terrifying the owners. So Ed and Lorraine Warren are real people. These are real stories. They just also happen to be fantastic horror films as well. The actual Annabelle doll looks less scary, I think? I mean, she looks less likely to murder you, if that helps, I don't know. Ed and Lorraine Warren got the doll from a student nurse in 1970. They had told the Warrens that the doll was behaving suspiciously, and then a psychic told the students that the doll is indeed the vessel being used by a spirit, or a deceased girl, named Annabelle. So the student and her roommate heard this and thought, okay, we're just gonna try and take care of the spirit, you know, nurture it almost. The doll, on the other hand, had different intentions. Annabelle would often display malicious and frightening behavior. Also, no, I would not try and nurture a haunted doll. If a psychic told me that, I wouldn't even stick around for a second. I wouldn't even pay. I'd be like, thank you so much. Here's my belongings. Just take everything. I'm going to disappear. The doll itself was deemed demonically possessed by the Warrens. 
That's like a verified badge, but for demons. When Annabelle Comes Home was released, the Hollywood Reporter spoke to Tony Spera, the real life occult museum curator and an actual son-in-law of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Spera confirmed that the Annabelle doll is accurately portrayed in the films. Huh? The main difference being the appearance. That's it? Lorraine Warren even says looks are deceiving. It's not what the doll looks like that makes it scary, it's what it has been infused with inside the doll. So, sleep in fear folks, there you go. Well guys, there you have it. Which of these horror movie dolls gave you the creeps? I would have included Stinky Pete from Toy Story 2, but we'll save him for another time. I have a bone to pick with that dude. Let us know in the comments which is your favorite. I feel like if I ever saw the Annabelle doll in real life, I would want to poke it or something. I love horror movies that much that if I saw this thing, I would ask for an autograph, probably. I'm wild like that. Until next time, I'm Taylor McWaters. Stay safe. See ya.